pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, okay, appeal number 3113, the applicant Radner Rockwell, LLC, property located at 1001 Eagle Road, requests an extension of time for obtaining permits under section 280-144 of the code for six months until June 5th, 2024. Good evening. Good evening. I don't know if we wanna handle the, the first two at the same time. They're the same application. Uh, same applicant, different zoning relief. That's fine. I, we could do that. I'll, yeah. I'll read that one into the record, too, then. Uh, extension, I'm sorry. Appeal number 3148, the applicant, Radner Rockwell, LLC, property located at 1001 Eagle Road, request an extension of time for obtaining permits under Section 280-144 of the code for six months until June 30th, 2024. Thanks. Great. I, I thought we had synchronized those last application at last extension but they are what they are yeah. um, good news is we're making progress uh, we are working on outside agency approvals uh, we received actually our MPDS um, letter today it had we whittled it down to one comment um, we expect a pen dot letter yeah I'm sorry yeah will you enter your appearance oh I'm sorry yeah. R Rob Lambert of site engineering concepts um, on here on behalf of the applicant um, so we have PennDOT, we expect uh, they, uh, their system says we're supposed to get a review on November 22nd. Um, and then the last outstanding, um, uh, the last outstanding outside agency is the sewer approval. Uh, we've gotten all the sign-offs from downstream. Um, Radner, uh, when we were about to get the, the final sign-off from Radner, they asked for uh, additional study, um, so we're completing that study right now. Hope to be finished that early December um, to get signed off from Radner. Okay. Do you think it's realistic June 30th that you won't be back here again? Or I mean, I know it's hard to look into the crystal ball. Uh, yeah, it, just it, to give us an idea. It, it, it's hard to predict. Um, I we we may need one additional extension, um, but the intent would be that we're in the ground as soon as possible. We're still pushing hard to get there. Okay, and how about the other uh, HOP, the highway occupancy? Oh, uh, that, that, was, that was the PennDOT piece. That okay. was November 22nd. Oh, that's been approved. Oh, well, no, we're, we're expecting their response November 22nd. Oh, oh, NPDES is the we had, soil concept. Yeah, we, we had whittled that one down to uh, one comment. Understood, okay. Uh, any questions from the board? No? Uh, without objection then. Uh, good luck with the project. We'll Great. grant the extension. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, appeal number 3167, the applicant, Miguel Pena, property located at 400 South Wayne Avenue, zoned R2 residential. The applicant received zoning approval on July 21st, 2022, at appeal number 3129 for disturbance of steep slopes on the premises and relief from section 280-112D and E that prohibit the disturbance of the steep slopes. The applicant is submitting a new application to have the zoning hearing board approve the required relief due to the expiration of the decision and minor changes to the plan. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Uh, state your name and uh, for the record, we'll have Norma Sway in, yeah. I, I do. Miguel Pena. Good evening. Thanks for uh, having me this evening. Um, so as you're aware, uh, we, uh, I received a variance in uh, July of 2022 for disturbance of steep slopes. I was given relief for uh, exactly 1,537 square feet of steep slopes to uh, remove a hill from my backyard which in turn would allow me to build a patio, build a retaining wall, and retaining wall on a patio. Um, though the actual grading permit was, I applied for immediately after receiving the variance, uh, was granted about six months later, roughly January of, of 2023. And um, at that point, dead of winter, um, I decided to pause the project until the spring uh, and 
somewhere along the way between um, speaking to my engineer who's present this evening tonight, uh, speaking to the township engineer and making some, some uh, requested revisions on their part, uh, I decided to make some improvements to the plan, um, which I later received the permit for as well. So in July of this past year, I received the permit for the revised plans that are in front of you this evening. Um, the improvements include- the grading permit? Yes, that sir. That you're referring to? Correct. Uh, the improvements include a relocation of the seepage pit that was in the pr original proposed plan. Uh, we moved it to uh, what I would consider to be uh, a better location, less disturbance to the property, less excavating, less, less, uh, less piping uh, from the drains that are gonna be in front of the, the boulder wall. And um, secondly, after looking at the dirt wall for about a year, um, I decided that you know, we, we should push the wall back uh, about seven to 10 feet, depending, it's a curved wall, so in some areas it's about seven feet or less, and, some, and at the, the highest point it's about 10 feet. Uh, to create more uh, usable uh, space in our yard. Um, we essentially, we value engineered the plan. Um, you know, it was a win-win. We, we went with a newer technology for the seepage pit. So the, the technology that we're using for the seepage pit is uh, about the same volume in half the footprint. Uh, we went with these kind of plastic underground tunnels and um, we changed, we effectively changed the dimensions of the wall because we, in pushing it back, we made it longer, but we didn't change the height of the wall. Uh, and most importantly, we did not disturb a single inch of additional uh, steep slopes. So the revised plan show the exact square footage of steep slopes that I was given relief for um, in, in July of 2022. And uh, I'm asking for, um, you know, the zoning board to approve the, the revisions to the plan, um, which, you know, as, as mentioned, were value engineered and, and improved without uh, disturbing any additional steep slopes. Okay. Uh, why don't we mark some exhibits? And then, sure. And then you can take us through. So uh, let's call the application uh, E1, applicant one, uh, the September 2nd, 2022 cover letter from Mr. Economides with the uh, July 2022 approval, we'll make that number two. Uh, we'll make is your- this, Is this an exhibit? I don't think so. I think that was just a transmittal letter. The Cornerstone Consulting. Do you okay. want this included okay. no, in the record? Okay. Okay. The Cornerstone? Uh, I'm indifferent. I think it was just a transmittal. Yep. Uh, let's make the deed three. We'll make your June 16th, 2023 grading permit four. You have a packet of photographs consisting of four pages. We'll make that five. And then your cornerstone engineering plans collectively, we'll make those a six, if that works. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, Sure, why don't we do that? So I, I understand somebody wants to request party status. So why don't we take care of that and then we'll then I'll let you proceed with your presentation. Okay. Mr. Gammer. Bless you. Good evening. If you could state your, your name and address for the record. Yes. Uh, Baron Gemmer, three thirty five South Wayne Avenue. I live, uh, the, the property's abut on the center line of South Wayne Avenue. And I guess you should swear him in. I do. So I should have asked for some cliff notes earlier today, Gus, but I mean, based on proximity, yes. it's really not much to Exactly, no, right? there's, yeah. and he was granted party status, party status the last, in the last hearing, yeah. well. So I, you'll be yeah. granted party status. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Pena, thank you. Here, why don't I, uh, if somebody wants, if you're both gonna speak, then, and actually we'll have you sworn in and state your name. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I thought it'd be best if uh, John Anderson from Cornerstone, who actually did the revised plans, kind of walks through 
the, um, the revisions. Sure. I do. John Anderson. Good evening. My name is John Anderson. I'm with Cornerstone Consulting. We're the engineers that are working with Mr. Pena on the project. We were here before. Yeah. Is there a CV in the back? No. A6. Ace, is that where we are? Six, yep. I've lost track. Yep, we're six. Oh, I'm sorry. Seven. Seven. I lost track. Uh, good evening. My name is John Anderson with Cornerstone. I'm a licensed uh, professional engineer in the Commonwealth of uh, Pennsylvania. I've handed up my CV. I've been before you before as and been qualified as an expert witness for civil engineering. Is there any objection, Mr. Gammer? Do you have any objection? Any questions from the board? No. Okay. Ooh. Thank you very much. See me as an expert. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, before you is the plan that was submitted uh, as part of the packet. I believe you had indicated as applicant six or A6. Uh, this plan is uh, basically the site plan or sheet one of the site plan. What I've done for testimony this evening is I've included various parts of the plan sheets into one plan. I've shown the contouring, the existing and proposed contouring on this plan. I've showed the improvements as far as the uh, retaining wall, the existing improvements with the building. Also, it's showing the stormwater piping and seepage bed associated uh, with the stormwater management uh, improvements that were required as part of the grading permit application. This is the new plan. Um, and up on the screen, the retaining wall that Mr. Pena was indicating is uh, basically behind the existing dwelling. This property fronts on uh, South Wayne Avenue and Conestoga Road. The primary uh, entrance to the building and driveway is off of South Wayne, and the improvements, the majority of the improvements are at the rear of the property, which basically fronts on Conestoga Road. As Mr. Pena had indicated, we were previously before you for a retaining wall that extended along the steep slope area that was in the back of the existing building. Uh, we pushed that wall, as Mr. Pena had indicated, uh, seven to 10 or so feet uh, back further. Um, the when you say back, do you mean closer to Conestoga Road? Closer to Conestoga Road, yes, sir. Uh, and it'll opened up this area behind uh, the property. The steep slopes uh, is a line of steep slopes that extend along the rear of the property. Uh, the area that's really where my highlighter was, uh, there are no steep slopes in that area. So pushing the wall back did not expand or increase our area of disturbance within the steep slopes. Um, we were originally showing, as part of the grading permit submission for the original submission, a seepage pit down here in the uh, lower or the top left-hand corner of the property along South Wayne Avenue. Uh, in speaking with uh, Mr. Pena's contractor, we relocated it up next to the building, which allowed us a discharge or a, a level spreader that would discharge towards South Wayne Avenue instead of directing it to the corner uh, of the lower end of the property, which would be the top uh, left-hand corner. That would do, excuse me, John, but just to add to that commentary, moving, relocating it to this side of the property would do a few things. One is it brings it closer to the retaining wall, which is where we're trying to capture the water. Um, so the distance is significantly closer, probably 70% closer to the retaining wall. Secondly, it would um, eliminate the need to run piping across the front lawn that I just recently planted and and then cutting through the driveway that I recently paved to get to the other side of the driveway. So um, it just made all the sense in the world to relocate the seepage pit to this side of the property. Uh, the way we're collecting stormwater is in two fashions. Uh, we're basically collecting the roof runoff in the existing uh, roof drain areas and picking up that piping with underground piping to an underground seepage pit. We're also adding in some yard drains in the rear of the in the rear of the house, uh, the, the grade will be pitched away from the rear of the building, um, but the grade also drops from Conestoga Road towards the building. So we're adding uh, yard inlets in that location, all piped, picking up storm water from the roof uh, to a seepage pit, which then would 
as the overflow of the seepage pit um, goes through a pipe into a level spreader that would discharge to, towards uh, South Wayne Avenue. And as Mr. Pena had indicated, uh, basically we're reducing our area disturbance associated with additional piping. We don't have to relocate as a sanitary sewer line anymore. Um, it just is a nicer uh, design for the property. And, and the original uh, approval that was given was based on 1,537 square feet of steep slope disturbance. And has that number changed as a result of these plans? No. Um, and just for clarification, that steep slopes are slopes in excess of 20%. So that's correct. Correct. Mr. Weitzman, I have a copy of the original approved variance plan if you'd like to see that. The plan? Yeah. I think it would be helpful. Yeah. To show us what's sure. changed and. Yeah, I was wondering whether a plan had been prepared which showed the previously approved locations and the new locations. Do you have something like that? I, I, I did not do an overlay. Um, but we can probably put them side by side so you can see that. So the orientation of the plan has changed. Uh, the plan. <laughs> yes, it will have to change 90 degrees. <laughs> yeah. Because it's on its side now, we can't read it. Thank you. That's pretty good. How's that? Yeah. Uh, the plan to the top of the screen is the new plan that's submitted as part of the application. The previous plan that was approved is part of the the zoning uh, variance hearings in 2022 and also the grading permit uh, is to the bottom of the page. You can see that the wall configuration uh, was following, it's in a, like a crescent uh, fashion, it was following the, exi the excavation that was, uh, that had happened at that time. Um, and was the following the steep slopes. That's correct. The, the exact line of the steep slopes. Um, so we had shown that we were going to encroach into the existing steep slopes that were in excess of 20 percent uh, in an area of 15, uh, 1,500 square feet, just a little over 1,500 square feet, the plant at the top. But, uh, the other addition was that we were proposing a shed just behind the retaining wall. Uh, we've relocated the shed to the lower portion of the driveway. As you can see, we've reconfigured. Uh, it's still in a crescent format, but the wall is more... Uh, linear instead of curvilinear, if it, lack for a better term, uh, and it's pushed a little bit further away from the home and the proposed patio. Proposed patio is in the same shape and size, and primarily the wall has just moved closer to Conestoga. Uh, the lower plan, which was the original approved plan, showed a detention basin or seepage pit in the lower uh, corner of the property, which is towards the upper left-hand page and we've moved that to the side of the building, basically to the side that adjacent to South Wayne Avenue. And that shed is located in the front yard of this property? Yes, it is, yeah. Okay. Thanks. The only relief you're looking for tonight, though, is for the steep slope disturbance, is that it's correct? It's the same relief that was granted same. in 2022. If you want, I can read the sections, but it's no, that's part of okay. the application. We're, but yeah. yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so you don't need relief for where you're proposing to place the shed or for any stormwater. Cor correct. Well, you're not asking for it. I think you do need it, but you're not asking for it. Uh, I don't have a permit to do the shed. The only thing we're here for tonight is the steep slopes. To, to clarify, the reason why we put the shed on the plan was just in the spirit of trans transparency. I understand why you moved the shed. I'm just saying you put it in a spot where you can't put it. That's all. Yeah, um, and I'm just saying that the reason why we showed the shed in the plan, any, I don't have any plans to build a shed anytime soon. The reason why I put it on the plan in the first place was in the spirit of transparency. Um, but yes, you're 100% correct. We will need to go in for a permit for the shed at some point in the future. And at that point, I'm sure I'll be told if, it's, if I'm allowed to put it there or not and where I can put it. Quite frankly, I can move it back to that the original spot, if, if need be. Happy to do that. The, the space between the patio and the wall, um, has that been graded flat? Yes, sir. 
Yes, it has. That was a hill. It was well, your contours don't show them on the draw. Yeah, when, when was that? Was the work that's reflected in the photographs that's, that are marked as A5, was that work done prior to the grant of the first variance or since the grant of the first variance? So, I, may I see the pictures? Because I don't remember. I can tell by looking at them. I don't remember. If they may be from the original permit. Okay. Yeah, no. This, so these pictures are from um, this. These pictures show the additionally act, the additional excavation. So, so the wall has, has been pushed back now. And, and that, that work was done after I was issued a grading permit by the township. That's the most recent work we did. Do you want to walk us through those pictures since we sure. have them as an exhibit? So if you, uh, is that better? The, this way? Yeah. Got it. All right, so, so this top picture here, it would be um, if I'm standing inside my slider glass door here looking out towards the wall. And then the boulders that you see in front of the dirt wall are just staged, ready to be placed. And Norma, for the record, that's photo one of exhibit A5. Photo two would simply be um, if you're looking at the same photo one, but you orient slightly to the right about 45 degrees or so. So it's the back right corner looking from the home. Photo number three is the complete opposite. So it's about a 45 degree look to the left. Um, photo number four is about a 90 degree look to the left of the property. And then Photo number five is just another stockpile of boulders off to the left side of the home. So it would be on the plans, it would be uh, right here. Do you have that pointer? Thanks, John. So on the, on the plans, it would be about right here. We have a stockpile of boulders. So we've staged some boulders here, which you saw in the pictures. And then photo number five is a stockpile of boulder, boulders located right here where the proposed seepage pit or just adjacent to where the proposed new seepage pit is going to be built. Photo number six is just another angle of the same stockpile of boulders next to where the seepage pit is going to be built. Um, Photo number seven, again, just same stockpile of boulders, just different orientation. We're now looking back towards the construction entrance off of Conestoga Road. You could see the, uh, you know, the ballast kind of driveway entrance and then the tree protection on either side of it. Photo number eight is uh, closer to the corner. So here, looking this way. You can see the, the back corner, the back corner of the home. Uh, this would be uh, right here, this corner. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Um, okay. Anything else? I do you want to walk us at all through the, the rest of the packet here? I know I looked through it earlier. I know some of it is are grading permit drawings and such, but it's up to you. Yeah, the rest of the sheets. Um, sheet one is a site plan indicating the various zoning tables and the various improvements. Sheet two should be an existing conditions plan. Uh, sheet three, um, grading and utility. And then the rest of the sheets are details, construction details. And so basically that was what was submitted as part of the um, the newest grading permit submission that was reviewed by the township, township engineer. We received approval from them on the various improvements. Uh, anything else for us? No, I'd, I'd just like to add that 
you know, I think I think the these improvements to the plan, you know, I, I'm I think we'll look back and be glad that I did it. I think we're going to get more li living space in the backyard. I think we'll be able to have I have four children, so a much more usable space. Um, I also want to add that the reason why I didn't come to the zoning board first is because when we revised the plans, we were very careful not to disturb any additional steep slopes, right? I'd already been through the zoning process and got the relief that I needed. So any revisions to the plan, you know, John and I were very careful not to disturb any additional steep slopes. We then submitted those plans and got a permit, a grading permit from the township, which is why we started the work. Um, it wasn't until after that that I was made aware that, hey, because you changed the dimensions of the wall, you gotta go back through zoning. Um, you know, it was a, a bad assumption on my part. I just assumed because I was given relief for 1,537 square feet of steep slopes, and I wasn't increasing that number that, you know, I, I wouldn't need to go through zoning again, but, um, you know, that's why we're here. This will cost me a little bit more time and money, but in the end, I'll be glad I did it because we get more living space, and I think I get a much more efficient um, stormwater management system. Have you spoken to any of your neighbors, any of the folks that received notice of tonight's hearing? Yes, I have. Many. Okay. And are you... Are getting support detractors. if they if they were in opposition they would they would be here there's only one uh, one neighbor here and I think so far he's he's not opposed to the project oh, oh we have two and my wife <laughs> okay um, thanks Connie okay um, so if there's nothing else then mr. Gemmer what's that if you have any questions Yeah, I, I don't have any questions for them, so I'll, I just have one exhibit, and then I'll talk about that. Uh, how, would, how would you like? This was an upstream crop. Yeah. yeah I, I, oh, I'm sorry. Is, I thought he was done. Okay. I thought he was done already. I didn't know. He, is there any other witnesses? Got it. Okay, okay. No cross, oh, then? No, no yeah. cross. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Gus? Public? Well, well question. One left that letter. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Okay. So then... Let the record reflect that there was a, a letter submitted by Richard Bukosk, I'm gonna spell that for you, B-U-T-C-O-S-K, neighbor at 325 South Wayne Avenue. Uh, that letter was in opposition, and it is part of the record, and we'll make sure it's part of the file. So have you seen that letter? I, I have not, that's news to me. I don't in fact, we've, we've had multiple conversations with Mr. Budkosk and not one time has he told us he was in opposition to the project. Okay. So that's news. The, the letter arrived today at around 3.30, and, and it was re re referred to as concerns, not a, specifically opposition. But okay. Right. And it's, it's made part of the record. It'll, we'll make sure we provide it to you if he has it. Okay, great. Thank you, Constantine. And, and so, you know, it, the areas of concern where the, where the uh, stormwater is being directed to run off, he feels that it's right on his front door. Um, and looking at knowing where South Wayne Avenue is and the slope of the road, I can certainly imagine he's going to uh, get some of, some of the runoff. And then secondly, uh, aesthetically, he is not a big fan of your shed, just so you know. Okay. Good to know for future reference, but again, no, no plans to build the shed anytime soon. Um, the, so it's important to note, um, and I appreciate the concern, but it's important to note that the steep slopes have been removed. They were removed February, uh, February 22nd of 2022. So it's coming up on two years. In the last year and call it 10 months, nine, 10 months, we've had several storms, torrential rains, and not one time has there been any water runoff from our property. Um, I don't think building the retaining wall is gonna change that. Um, but more importantly, what it's done is it's actually solved the hardship that I came in uh, to the zoning board in the first place. Because now all the water, since, since we removed the wall, it's been graded away from the house. So now the water that used to run toward and up against the new foundation wall that I built now runs away from it and then percolates. So we've never had any water problems in two years. 
Um, and I'm happy to, you know, have a conversation with Mr. Budkosk at the appropriate time to uh, address his concerns. I think this, the this, this stormwater management system that we're putting in um, encompasses everything that we ever want to build on this property, um, including the patio and the shed, if ever approved. Um, and and I think is is got. It's, I think the volume of that uh, not only covers all the impervious coverage, but goes above and beyond. And is there any existing stormwater management at the property? There, there is not. Um, I will say that I was very pleased that all our downspouts are uh, piped underground, or whatever that's worth. But it's not a true stormwater management system. We, we will be tying every one of those underground downspouts. We'll be tying them into the stormwater management system. So all the water that runs off the roof effectively will will have access to the to the seepage pit. Okay. That and that was by design, thanks to John. Do you rest the, anything else you want oh, to present, thank Mr. Pena? Yeah. No, I think, I think we're good. We've covered everything I wanted to cover, unless, unless you all have any other any, questions. Any board questions? No? John? No? Okay. Uh, you want to move your exhibits into the record then? Yes, sir. Okay, without objection. Uh, yeah, Mr. Gemmer. What's that? Will you have a presentation? Oh, yeah. I, are you telling me to keep Yes. And I'll just remind you that you're under oath. I have one exhibit. How would you like me to mark it? Uh, I don't uh, know. What letter do we want to use? It's G1. G <laughs> <laughs> okay. G1, G1 it is. Um, my exhibit uh, consists of blown up versions of the first page is the blown up version of the prior plan that was approved and that's what the sheet numbers are and I, I page numbered them on the bottom right in case I'm referring to that. The first one is from uh, the previous plan. The next three are from the uh, current plan, the proposed plan with this appeal and then the last one is some calculations that compare the two based upon impervious coverage. Um, the, the, the first uh, point I'd like to make relates to sheets, uh, pages one, two, and three here. This is the old plan, and although it wasn't mentioned in the presentation, this is where uh, there's a, the driveway is right there, and then there's a, a thinner stone wall there, and then steep slopes there. And so this is what was presented in 2022, where you see the, those three things, driveway, steep slopes, and wall. If you go to page three, page two, my bad, we'll get to page three in a second. Page uh, two shows that same area with steep slopes grayed out, which have been disturbed for this, uh, the stairs and the uh, wall repair. As they're, as they're calling. So you notice how these are also steep slopes here, which had already been disturbed, which is why they're the lighter, lighter gray. The same there. So there's 60, uh, according to this calculation, 64 square feet of additional steep slopes that, is, that have, are proposed to be disturbed and apparently already have been disturbed, in addition to the 1537 that's, that's down there. And you'll see on page three, that's where this proposed repair of wall and stairs is, which the existing was 49, and then they're uh, disturbing 64 feet, which is also additional impervious. Um, second, 
Second point, I, I blew these up so you could see the total impervious. On the original plan, it's the patio, which didn't change in size, the shed, which didn't change in size, and the wall. On page three for the On page three for the new plan, you'll see the patio. Now this is increased over here by, by 64, and then the wall size is increased because it was pushed back. On page four, you'll see the shed. Now it's new location. It wouldn't fit on the blow up. And then page five is the comparison of the impervious. Uh, where the stone wall increased in size, and now there's additional 64 steep slope disturbance, but also impervious for the stairs and the wall. And the increase is not insignificant, 271 square feet, which is 23% more than they were originally going to be disturbed in the, in the previous, previous plan. And I think this has already been gone over, but as you saw, here's the wall in its, in its original approved from last July. and the wall there, and I, it's, it's been uh, discussed, but I just wanted to read from uh, one sentence or two from uh, the, the Mr. Anderson's memo from Cornerstone. He, he starts off his, his uh, paragraph by talking about the relief that was given for encroachment and steep slopes, and the next sentence is, the encroachment was to construct a boulder retaining wall that will allow him to construct an exterior patio in the rear of the property. Actually, the encroachment for the steep slopes was because of the drainage. The, the, the decision by the Zoning Hearing Board doesn't mention patio anywhere. The gist of it is under finding number six, findings of fact number six, which is prior to steep slope disturbance, the water runoff was flowing down to, to that. So there's significant m more dirt being taken off um, for the, the patio is not the hardship. The size or even the existence of the patio is not the hardship. So to, to go back farther, particularly when there's been no problems with the, with the, uh, with the rain and the, and the water, storm water flow into the basement seems excessive. That's, that's about, I don't know, 50 to 100 cubic yards of dirt, I think, that that all amounts to. And if in, in that same cornerstone note, it said, uh, the proposed boulder retaining wall was moved further away from the existing house to allow more room between the patio and the wall. Well, if the goal was to have more room between the patio and the wall, the patio is 18 by 34. It's a very large patio. It could have been reduced to accomplish the same, the same goal. My, uh, one more point on the uh, advertisement. I just want to get to this. It was read already in the record where the first part of it um, you know, states the address in the, re in the zoning district, and then it also talks about the prior approval, it doesn't, the only thing it says about the current one is the applicant is submitting a new application, um, oh, excuse me, to, to, the applicant is submitting a new application to, to approve the required relief due to the expiration of the decision and minor changes to the plan. Well, the expiration of the decision is irrelevant because this is, that's the whole reason he's coming back, it's a new plan, and also at the time this submitted, there was no expiration. You had already granted an extension for this. And uh, there's, there's more than minor changes going on. I have, I have one more that I want to go over. Um, on page four. And Mr. Payne has already talked about the location of the shed. So there's, uh, I believe Mr. Riley's already referred to this. Um, we have to remember, though, whether it's intent or not, this is what was submitted for the grading plan. So this is what he could potentially go forward with. And as, as I think Mr. Riley's already pointed out, and I think it was also pointed out in the letter from the neighbor, this encroaches into the front yard setback. It wouldn't, that portion would need a variance, just like the additional steep slopes that I pointed out would need relief. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Kramer. We don't have the application for the, for the grading permit in front of us. So it's not at all clear whether that, that grading permit application incorporates that portion 
of this plan into the application. I, I, believe that's, I believe that's what Mr. Anderson just testified, that these four sheets were what submitted for the grading permit. But th I, that was going to be my question if it hadn't already been an asked or answered. Well, so, but thank you. No, I mean, I, I was going to ask it, but he stated it for the record already. Um, so the shed here, the first issue is the encroaching of the front yard setback, which would require relief. And again, this is all part and parcel, whether he's, you know, whether the order or the timing of everything put together. Um, there's also, I think as the letter from Mr. Butkos probably stated, uh, it's not in keeping with the character of the neighborhood, which is one of the uh, criteria when you're evaluating variances and special exceptions. But also, more importantly, from a stormwater perspective, while there is stormwater now, while there's going to be stormwater uh, management on this property, whether it's through the previous plan or this plan, this is 192 square feet of impervious surface that is not controlled for stormwater. And so it's very close to South Wayne, so this is going to contribute to the water that continues to go down South Wayne, I'm sorry, you were <laughs> down South Wayne without being a part of any of the stormwater management system. They're not asking for relief from impervious surface. I, no, I really My understanding the, is they're not even close to needing that. that the, from impervious the impervious surface, surface um, uh, amount in, in, in this particular point is not, the, is not the point. It's the fact that there's additional surface that is not being controlled by the stormwater that's required for additional impervious surface and which will run off into the street because it is so close to the street and there's no stormwater to, to, uh, management system to catch it. Uh, so, the, the, in, in closing, the two points would be, I would, I question the advertisement where it just says, this is a new submission, we have, we want required relief for an expiration of a plan which is irrelevant and minor changes. Um, I don't think minor changes when you're moving the shed and the stormwater system about 120 feet, the consequences of the shed where it's in its new location, um, a, an increase in impervious surface, some of which is not controlled of, of that, um, and additional steep slopes being disturbed. I don't think those are my, I don't think if I read that, I would think that would be a minor change. So I do question the advertisement and the notice for this. Um, but in, in closing, this board in a year ago, July, approved a plan based upon the, the hardship that was presented to say we need to, to alleviate the storm water going into the foundation of the house. And the board deemed that to be the minimum relief necessary to accomplish that. If that was the minimum relief necessary, this can't be the minimum relief necessary given the, some of the additions and, and the changes that, are, that have gone on in, in increasing the impervious and some of the other disturbances. Any questions, Mr. Gemmer? I'd cross, I, Mr. Pena. I, I, I would like to, I don't have any questions for him, but I would like to rebut because I think he's, he mentioned some things that are, are not accurate. We'll give you a chance for that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I have one question sure. for Baron, uh, we've heard that the shed isn't being built now, um, and that can be part of our decision mm -hmm. to be clear on that. Mm -hmm. So a year from now, two years from now, if he comes in for a permit for the shed, withstanding the front yard setback issue, it's under 500 square feet. But, but the look back now with stormwater would require additional stormwater. So if it's not part of this, it's a more onerous process if it's separate. So I hear what you're saying there, but if he takes it off this plan, it becomes a bigger deal because I, I think it's a three-year look back now for stormwater. So it, the incremental amount, he'd have to somehow add to the stormwater management of that. Uh, but I understand your point. And, but it's still in, in yes, in, so for, is, the extent that it's part and parcel of this, both the neighbor and myself, it's like that's not in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. If, if it was going to be installed and stormwater management was put in place for it, that's, that's the right. Any other questions? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, do you want to move your Oh, yes. Let me move. I'll move my exhibit G1 into the record. <laughs> Thank you. Let me put this back in. Uh, Mr. Pena. So a couple of comments. Um, I just want to clarify two things. One is this improvement right here that Barron was referencing, 
there's an existing boulder wall there that's and steps that are completely decrepit. They're unusable, they're unsafe. In fact, when you're coming, either going up or down the steps, you can hit your head on the gutter coming off the, the side of the house or the garage. So, so we, we, are, we have to move the steps over. Um, that was um, you know, visited and revisited with the, with the township engineer and the township um, QCI, who's the, um, uh, the uh, township uh, third party engineer, and was, was approved and permitted. Um, so, and and there, there really isn't any steep slopes here, but I understand that the plan more or less shows that. The 1,537 square feet of steep slopes included that area. It's not in addition to. So that's the first thing. I just want to clarify. None of that work has started. Mr. Mr. Gemmer said that we've, we've already removed those steep slopes. We have not. not. That decrepit wall is still decrepit. It's been decrepit since I moved in the house two years ago. The second thing is we've increased the impervious. I know I'm not here for relief on impervious, but I just need to clarify for the record. We've increased the impervious from the original approved plan to this approved plan. Uh, excuse me, for this, to this revised plan from 11.2% to 11.5%. That is the increase in impervious between the plan that this board approved a year and a half ago and the plan that I'm, I'm putting in front of you today. So I just wanted to say that for the record. Mr. Anderson, would I have a question for you. So I, I'd like to hear from you on that, what Mr. Pena just said, that the Disturbed slopes at 1537 includes that area that Mr. Gemmer highlighted for us. I don't believe it includes that area. Uh, I believe that the interpretation of the, and I, I can't speak for them, but it's an existing non-conforming retaining wall, and therefore, it, under the ordinance, it can be rebuilt uh, in its current state into something of what was similar to that but I believe the 1537 was just the area behind the house. Okay. okay. But to clarify what Mr. Pena had indicated, the additional impervious coverage is covered under the stormwater management calculations. So regardless of where that shed goes, obviously it, it would be in compliance or would need to be in compliance with the ordinance or additional relief would be necessary. I don't think Mr. Pena wants to come back to the zoning hearing board, so he's gonna most likely locate it somewhere in compliance with the township ordinance and setbacks but the calculations for stormwater included that impervious coverage. Got it, Thank okay. You. Any other questions? No? Public comments? Anyone from the public wish to comment? Good evening. Connie Congleton, C-O-N-G-L-E-T-O-N. -E um, it's really about aesthetics and speaking to the character of South Wayne and Radnor that people, if they're trying to improve their home that has looked like an eyesore for the first 10 years that I lived here that no one lived in it. And then for two years, they've been working very hard, spent a lot of money and a lot of time uh, and missed some very uh, significant celebrations at their home because it, they could not live in it the way they in, envisioned living in it. Um, keeping with the character, again, of Radnor and South Wayne, we all do our best to make our homes look beautiful. Um, I think that's all they're trying to do. And from my experience, is it just this is it borders on harassment and bullying that they can't move forward improving and spending a lot of money making all of our homes improving the, the value of all of our homes with the work that they're doing so i just i'm thumbs up for their project and for your consideration thank you thank you anyone else okay seeing none um, do i have a motion want to try and take the lead, John? Well, the problem is that you can't simply refer to the plants because the, re the relief relates specifically to relief from the requirements of Section 280.112D and, uh, and nothing else on the plan. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would, I would move that 
the applicant be granted uh, the relief requested from the requirement uh, for um, non-disturbance of sleep, uh, st sleep, <laughs> steep slopes uh, required by section 281.12 D and E and for period full stop. Nothing else on the plan that might relieve, require relief is granted relief by this action. Second. Any discussion? Well, I'll, I'll go first. I'll take the lead on it. So a couple of thoughts. Uh, one of the exhibits, I'm going to deal with the hardship issue first. I, th I think that because exhibit A, oh boy, A2, I believe, was our prior decision and, and our findings of fact, conclusions of law, we did find at that time that there was a hardship that was not created by the applicant. And as a result, we granted the relief then. Um, the disturbance of the steep slopes is similar in this application as it was in the, uh, the prior. Um, from what I heard tonight, it sounds like there are some beneficial changes to the plan overall, including uh, some stormwater management and some less disturbance, less construction activity that would be needed to install that stormwater management system. So I, I'm satisfied that we've that the applicant has met his burden and uh, I'll be voting in favor. I concur with your comments, although I, we have to make sure that the prior application and this application are closely tied. Uh, if you look at just the paper track of this, it's a very confusing situation. And we go back to the original time when the work was done without permits and that's what got us here. Uh, a lack of knowledge of the code doesn't make the code invalid. Um, but the change between this and the last plan, I don't think, I think is a tremendous improvement. And uh, it actually reduces the disturbance a little bit. So uh, I'm in favor of it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see anything in the record provided this evening that uh, would undercut or render invalid the decision that we've made previously on on the application. Um, I, again, you know, my my interest here is that um, just the relief from the steep slope disturbance is what we're talking about. I think that that's clear. Mr. Gammer, I do appreciate the fact that there are differences in the two plans. Uh, I, I don't know, though, that the disturbance of the steep slope presented by uh, the plans here this evening are of such a, an extent that it uh, would uh, undercut or invalidate the, the prior decision of, of the zoning board uh, on the uh, on the question of steep slopes, so uh, for for those reasons, I'm going to uh, uh, approve the uh, grant of the relief. By the way, I, I forgot to welcome you when we when we kicked off this meeting. But would you like to join in? Uh, I really don't have a lot of the knowledge that the rest of you have, and so the reasons that you've stated all sound. Uh, okay, we'll take a vote then. Uh, John? Aye. John? Aye. Bud? Aye. I'm also in favor. Good luck with the rest of the project. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, appeal number 3168. <laughs> the, the, the applicant, Mayor and Rima Patel, Property located at 427 Midland Avenue, zoned R2 residential. Applicant seeks to construct a pool and pool house in the rear of their property 
the property backs up to the commercial properties on Lancaster Avenue. Applicant exceeds the maximum impervious coverage requirement by the code by 126 feet, half a percent. Applicant seeks a variance from section 280-20F, maximum impervious coverage of the code, and section 280-101B1 of the code, extension of non-conforming building. Applicant also contends that the relief requested is de minimis. Applicant seeks such other relief which may be required in conformity with the plans and testimony presented. Good evening, How are Nelia, you? representing uh, the applicant on this matter. Um, this is a property that's located on Midland Avenue in Wayne. Um, I have the aerial map indicating where it's located, the middle block, I believe, of the 400. Block of Midland Avenue, I believe, well, maybe a couple blocks down from St. Catharines, uh, going east. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Norma. Um, A3 indicates where the property is located. And the interesting thing about the property, the uh, proposed addition, the pool and the pool house is being located in the rear of the property here. This rear of the property backs up to the commercial properties on Lancaster Avenue. Uh, also, you'll notice actually the neighbor has a pool in the backyard similar to where um, the, the uh, Patel's pool will be located. So I just wanted to, to show the board where this is located. As I mentioned, uh, it is on Midland. It backs up to the commercial properties on Midland Avenue, which is really the neighbor that would be affected um, by the pool itself. Uh, there's two requests for relief here. The first request is uh, we are slightly over the impervious coverage by 126 square feet, which is a 0.5% increase over uh, the required amount. The required amount in this zoning district's 30%. We're at 30.5%, um, which is an addition of 126 feet. Uh, when I filed the application, actually, Patty Coffin pointed out the fact that there is um, an addition going on to the existing garage, and that addition is permitted. It's not extending an existing nonconformity, but that code also relates back to impervious coverage to some extent in that it says that it is permitted by right, provided you're in conformity with the density um, provisions of the code. So this would be slightly over those density provisions of the code, although if you're just looking at where the shed is located, and the impervious around the shed or around the addition to the uh, existing garage, um, it would be under the impervious coverage. It's the, uh, the pool coping that really puts it over. Um, so we have uh, Mr. Patel and Ms. Patel here uh, this evening, and they can step up and testify. Uh, Mike, uh, first I'm going to just show you the deed. You um, acquired the property in 2014, you and your wife? Yes. And you reside there with your, um, with your wife. The two of you reside there with your child, I believe, right? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Um, showing you what's been marked as A3, and that was the, um, the aerial that I showed you previously. And this does indicate where the arrow is, where the house is located, correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, and you see St. David's Road is located up here in this area? Yes. And then you're backing up to the commercial properties on Lancaster Avenue, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. What's directly behind you? It's a daycare and a commercial medical building. Right. And, and what is your proposal? What do you intend to, to put place in the backyard? We'd like to add a pool and a pool house with a patio. Okay. And is that going to be located in the rear of your yard there? Yes, it'll be in the rear. Um, and it looks like your neighbor to, uh, to the east uh, already has a pool back there. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Have you spoken to both your adjacent neighbors on either side of you? I spoke to both of them. And do they have any opposition? No. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you what's been marked as A4. Is this the current, this is the front of your home? Yes, that is. Right. And 
Again, showing A5, again, that's more of a close-up picture, showing the rear of your home located here and the commercial properties behind you. Yes, correct. And A6, is that the current condition of your rear yard? Yes. And it shows, it looks like an old garage, shed type of structure. Yeah, it was an old garage. We use it as a shed right now. And you're intending to extend um, that structure. Yes. Correct. Show you as A7, is this what the designer showed? And I'm sure it's a very pretty picture since it's done by your designer, but this is really what you're indicating um, to have there, perhaps not, <laughs> um, but yes. kind of in that type of manner. Is that? Yes, correct? that's correct. Um, now, I've marked as A8 and made part of the package um, a plan, but we also have A9, and this just slightly different than the plan because, again, Patty Kaufman had pointed out that it looked like you had flagstone around the pool, which would add to the impervious and actually made it more look like what it was supposed to be, which is pea gravel. And so yes. really the only difference between A9 that the board has and this plan is it specifically states that it's pea gravel and shows it as pea gravel instead of... Um, yes. Um, Ms. Kaufman was particularly concerned about that. She wanted to make certain that it was porous and not impervious. I'll mark, I'll hand these, I've marked them as A9. Okay, hey Mike, I'm showing you A9, uh, which is the proposed plan, correct? Yes, that's correct. And just a couple points. I think I've already mentioned it, but we have the impervious coverage table uh, down here. And you're indicating that the existing impervious is 6374. You're removing 287 square feet of impervious, and then you're adding the additional 939, which brings you over uh, the required amount of 6,900 by 126 square feet. That is correct. And um, as I mentioned before, the pool coping is actually the one that brings you over in that that is 167 square feet. Yes. Would that be accurate? And this is what you're intending to do as far as um, you know, the project's concerned? Yes. Um, how about stormwater management? How is that being addressed? So we do currently have a stormwater uh, pit that we did when we did the additional uh, addition earlier in 2015. So we do have that. We're looking to expand it. Yeah, and have to be, it would have to be expanded to include this as well, correct? Yes. It, okay. it, because actually, uh, Reiner doesn't give you credit for what you removed, so you're going to have to manage 939 square feet of, uh, of additional impervious. Yes. <laughs> That's all I really have. I wouldn't make some argument on the minimum standards here. Certainly that's discretionary with the board. It's a um, very small amount that we're intending to, um, to increase. Um, it really has no impact on the neighbors uh, whatsoever, no harm to the neighborhood. And at least we know that the two adjacent neighbors are um, in favor of it and have no opposition um, uh, on the project. Nick, a question. Um, I believe the pathway that goes back to the park is adjacent to the property. Is that easement held by you or by your neighbor? Uh, that's a good question. I don't have that um, information. Um, I don't think we have it on our, it's on our plan, uh, on our uh, engineering plan, it's not on there. So I'm sorry, there's an easement through one of those properties to people can walk back to the park? Yes. Okay. But they're not walking through your properties, for No, you? no, it's okay. fenced off, and we have a. It's fenced on both sides. Oh, okay. Where, where is it? Is it located? Um, I didn't realize it was there. Is you it? can see it on the aerial. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I know, I, John. How do you know that? I mean, that's like. It's back when I was on Park Street. Yeah. Park. 
Oh, yeah, he's pointing. Oh, it's on the side here. Okay. Yeah, it's fenced off. And we have yeah, it looks like it's right between your house and the neighbor's house. Yeah, it's well but it's fenced there. off. Yeah. And you won't be disturbing that. You're not having any effect on that at all. No. Okay. No. I would just request that you give us any part of the record, please. And open for any yeah, questions. The, the only question I'm, I'm I, I don't think it's actually a question. The, the extension, uh, the, the pool house, I mean, that's in essence replicating the existing footprint of the non conforming garage and merely bringing it forward somewhat with the roof. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. But, but that's it. Okay. Right. And, and Patty already gave her blessings on that, but for the fact that, you know, the impervious coverage issue. So, Nick, I know we're talking about 0.5%, but what consideration was given to reduce the size of that gravel patio, yeah. you know, by... Yeah, uh, Ms. Kaufman said the gravel, the gravel's okay, the pea gravel. I mean, that's poor. She's treating that as poor. When, we first, when I first saw this plan, I think we had, like, a, we were over by approximately 1,500 square feet. So we have really worked the plan. I went back to Mike several times and the engineer, and we really timed to reduce it as much as we can. And this is kind of like, you know, what we came up with as the, the smallest amount that we really could uh, reduce it on and still comply with the pool and the um, proposed um, um, pool house. So can you reconcile the A7 uh, the patio, the proposed patio area with A9. In other words, that's because it looks like you've got some um, stonework for yeah, some rich, of it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, right. Um, and that is actually, again, I think this was an early on rendering done by the design group on this. Um, the plan A9 shows it as the gravel. And that is what he would have to put in here in compliance with the, um, you know, with A9. And so I'll put on the record that uh, despite what the rendering may show, uh, the A9 would control the, um, the development of the property. Because I, I see what you're saying, because it looks like there's a portion that's pea gravel and then there's a portion that... Um, like it's stones paved, stones some or sort of pavers. So that that would not be pavers in accordance with a nine. That is that is pea gravel there. Okay, so it is literally then just the coping around the. Yeah, it's the it's the coping around the pool, as I said, and that's uh, 167 square feet. So that's really the only area that is um, impervious, is the uh, coping. So is the the space that's under. The proposed roof patio already impervious because that's, that's shown as an addition on the yeah, calculation. Yeah, I right. It looks like. Yeah, I would think that that. Well, Mike, you probably would know better than me. It, I believe that the proposed roof patio would be new impervious. Is that yes accurate? But what I'm I don't know how much. I don't, I don't know what the square footage is you need to get under it, but. Uh, reducing the size of that roof wouldn't get you there? Now, well, it would be, we have to reduce it 126 square feet, and he probably, you know, it, it would be such a small area that he probably wouldn't do it, I would assume. I, I talked to him about it you know, right before the hearing, actually. I said, what would happen, you know, if they came back and Someone's said, guy, if, if you asked Someone's for 126 said, square hey, feet. Hey, make the roof small. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, <laughs> what would happen? He said, I probably wouldn't do it just because. You know, it would be so small. Yeah, we try to anticipate what you're going to ask. <laughs> so. Okay. Any other questions for the board? No? Okay. Uh, public comment? No. I, boy, I'm really having trouble tonight. I told you. <laughs> Any, pub <laughs> Any public comment? Seeing none, uh, Nick. Uh, I would requ I request the exhibits be made part of the record, please, and Without request objection. approval um, of the plan of A9. 
you know, specifically um, with the Patels. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would, uh, I would uh, request, or I would move that uh, the applicants in Appeal 3168 be granted the relief requested uh, from Section 280-20F for maximum impervious coverage and Section 280-101B1 of the code, an existent, uh, extension of a nonconforming building in accordance with the plans and testimony submitted here this evening. Is there a second? Second. Any board discussion? Well, John asked about the size of the uh, patio, but how about the size of the pool? <laughs> Similar result, right? You get a pool you can't even take a stroke in. Uh, it looks uh, nice plan. That area, <coughs> this is one of those cases where we need holistic codes because the flooding problem on Midland Avenue is so bad. But it's further, yeah, I think most of it's further yeah, it is, down, it yeah. Is, but nonetheless, By the middle uh, school, yeah. that doesn't matter because that's not the way the code's written. Anyone else? Comment? No? We'll take a vote. Bud, uh, give you the about. honors. What's that? Uh, no. Oh, oh. Like yeah, no. Do you want to do you want to vote? I'll start yeah, with I'll you. Vote yes. Aye. John? Aye. I'm also in favor. Thank Good you, luck with yeah. the project. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Appeal number 3169, the applicant Eastern University. Property located at 1300 Eagle Road, zoned PI, planned institutional. Applicants request variances or such other zoning relief from the required number of off-street parking spaces, section 280-103B of the code, and the steep slope requirement, section 280-112D of the code. The campus is determined to be non-conforming as to the required number of off-street parking spaces the renovation of Workman Hall is to modernize and improve existing facilities to accommodate the existing student body and will not result in any increased parking demand. The steep slope being disturbed is man-made slope created during the construction of a parking lot. In addition, its disturbance is de minimis. The applicant further seeks such other relief consistent with the exhibits and testimony presented at the hearing. Mr. Coniglia. Nick Coniglia representing uh, the applicant Eastern University. Uh, this is an addition and a renovation of an existing building on campus, uh, Workman Hall. Workman Hall is located on Eagle Road, relatively close to where the entrance is on Eagle Road, perhaps a little bit uh, west of that entrance, and across the street from what was formerly Cabrini College or Cabrini University. Still is. Still is, as for now. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, Trevor Jackson, the Vice President of Finance and Operations, will uh, explain the purpose of the addition, which is really to modernize the existing um, uh, the building and to house both the music uh, and honors program of the university. Um, an application was made for land development on this project, and during the process, the township staff determined that the parking at the school was legally nonconforming as to the number of parking spaces. We'll get into that. It's, you look at the Radnor Code, it's pretty difficult to read and determine what the parking requirement is for a university. But you know, we, we complied with how the township wanted us to interpret the code. Not that we necessarily agreed with that interpretation, but for purposes this evening, uh, we'll show you what, how the township wanted us to interpret the code and, uh, the, and that we're under that number of parking spaces. Um, since we were asking for the parking anyway, one, the township staff suggested, look, you, you have steep slope here. Um, we realize it appears to be man-made, appears to be uh, as a result of uh, 
other projects on the campus for which permits were received. But since you're going to zoning anyway, why don't you go to zoning for the steep slope as well? We thought actually it probably was a good idea to, to reduce any questions regarding it. And Rob Lambert uh, will present plans indicating the steep sloped area and how they were created. And, and Frank is here. Okay, good. Now Frank Tavani, uh, traffic um, expert, will testify as to the parking demand and parking need for the university. Um, you're going to see that the university currently has 1,084 parking spaces. According to termination of the code, which is in your, your packet, uh, the township interpretation that we applied uh, requires 1,537 parking spaces. That count includes dorms as well as seats in the dining halls, which the people in the dorms use. Um, as well as all seating in the gym and the assembly rooms as if all of them were full at any one time. Uh, all offices as if all the offices were full at any one time, which as we know in colleges, professors are in and out all the time. Um, so it really doesn't consider the intermittent use of, of a college campus. Uh, so we, you'll see in, in the numbers, um, it, 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 the, the number is high, but we feel as, as if, and Frank did a study showing that at any one time, we have 25% of, of the spaces are vacant, and that is at the highest peak use. So we have 250 vacant parking spaces at the highest use of, of the university's use. Um, according to, again, the requirements regarding assembly area and office space, Workman Hall would require 64 parking spaces. So we're asking for relief from that requirement of 64 parking spaces. So um, Trevor, if you want to step up. Mr. Keneally, before you start with your witnesses, Mr. Chairman, may I? Just yeah, briefly. of course. Yeah. Um, Patty Coffin brought to our attention that there was a revised plan. I just want yes, to make sure I'm so going to hand that up. Perfect. That's all I want. Okay. To, I didn't figure I'd bring it up now. Make sure. Yeah. I, what, what I'll, the, we have revised plans and pictures. These are additional. They've been marked. Um, per, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure we yeah. got to it before. Yeah, we haven't. Then these are regarding the steep slope. When, so when Rob gets in the steep slope discussion, we'll pull them out and then refer to it. John, you can take it. Trevor Jackson, Vice President for Finance and Operations, Eastern University. Um, just a couple formalities, Trevor. Um, I've marked as A2 a copy of the deed for this portion of campus. Is that correct? That's accurate. And then A3, uh, what we've referenced previously, or actually we, have, we haven't referenced it yet, but we have an aerial photograph. And here's the Eastern Campus. And we have an asterisk on Founders Hall, correct? Workman Hall, correct. Workman Hall, I'm sorry. Founders is right next to it. Um, and this across the street from uh, Cabrini University. Correct. All right, and kind of near your entrance down uh, by King of Prussia Road. Correct. Um, so uh, what's the purpose of the addition? Uh, it is to house our Templeton Honors College, which is currently there. Uh, and also our music program. And is that housed in that building now, or why do you need the addition for it? Uh, they are both housed in there now. Uh, we are at capacity with those programs as, as at this point in time. And the existing building uh, is, is in need of great repair, put it that way. Um, we have an exhibit here that shows the enrollment trends at the university. And we'll get to it, but it's A15. And it looked like there was a peak of, in 2015 of 2,250 on-campus undergrad students. Not on-campus undergrad, but undergrad full-time students. Correct. Um, 
And as of 2022, uh, it's 1518, 1518, so it's actually reduced. Correct. And 2023, I believe you said it's maybe a little bit more than, than that number right now. Correct. Um, and it, the increase, I, I, obviously there's a, a, um, an increase in graduate school enrollment. How, how do you address that and what is that increase in graduate school enrollment? The overall growth that one may see in any news article that might have recently been um, published is predominantly to our online graduate programs. They've, they've really grown and expanded over the last three years um, to the point of almost doubling our total enrollment. But the capacity that we can have on campus has not changed, and those numbers have changed very little in recent years. And how about your dorm space? How, uh, how occupied is your dorm space? We are about 88 to 90 percent uh, at capacity for our dorms. Um, referencing the office space on campus, and you heard my opening, um, is the office space fully occupied at any one time? No. Uh, why is that? Uh, two main reasons. Uh, during the years when enrollment was down, there was a lot of layoffs uh, with, with employees and staff. Uh, since then, we have brought some back, but not to the same level that we were at back in, say, 2015. Um, but mainly due to, since COVID, um, we have a telework program uh, that employees can take advantage of, and I'd say about 40 to 50 percent do take advantage of working from home two days a week. Uh, so we never have a full capacity of employees on campus at any given day. Um, in your opinion, is there sufficient parking on campus? Yes. Are you aware of ever having issues with parking with students or anyone parking off campus? No. I mean, you're kind of a pretty enclosed campus there right, at Eastern. Correct. Um, that's all I have for Trevor. Thank you. Any board questions? Thank you. Thank you. Rob? I do. Rob Lambert, L-A-M-B-E-R-T. Rob, what's your profession? I'm a civil engineer. Uh, you're registered in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? Yes, I am. Um, have I marked as A19 your curriculum vitae? Yes. And um, have you testified and been qualified as an expert before any boards in Rounder Township? Many times. And as well as other townships as well? Yes. Um, may I have uh, Rob qualified as an expert in civil yeah. engineering? Without objection. Thank you. Um, Rob, first let's talk about the steep slopes, which we just handed up, and we're gonna, why don't we refer first to um, I'll go through um, the... So this is marked... A21. A21 in your packet. Um, I'll go through the exhibits that I handed up. Uh, I'll go through the existing, uh, the proposed. Um, I have a series of pictures and then the permit plan just to kind of give you a preview. Um, so on the left-hand side of this uh, is the existing survey. And this was updated from what was originally submitted. Um, uh, since the time we submitted, we actually went out and did additional survey work just to refine uh, the topography. Um, so this is the, the more accurate plan. Um, what's shown on this plan in the green, so again, I'm referring to the left-hand side, which is the existing, um, are the slopes that exceed 20%, um, and that's really what's the, the purview of the ordinance. Um, and then the blue was the 14 to 20% slopes. On the right-hand side of this, uh, you can see the proposed plan. So the darker brown color is the addition uh, that we're proposing. Uh, the lighter tan is the existing building. Uh, the, the lighter color are, are walkways. Um, what we've highlighted or, or circled in red on these plans, so there's three areas. Um, one area is to the left of the dark brown, um, and that's the larger area of steep slope uh, disturbance. Um, we have one small area in the upper right-hand corner, uh, which is uh, steep slope disturbance, and one small area in the bottom right corner, um, uh, which is an area, so uh, a small steep slope area. Um, 
starting off with the uh, larger area, uh, this area was created um, as part of a, a, a permit plan. And I'm going to show you a series of pictures. Make sure you reference the yep. things you want. So exhibit A22, um, there's two pictures of the slopes. And so uh, these were created uh, when they built the parking area. So you had uh, Workman Hall uh, when it was originally there. The slope was kind of gradual from the back of the building down. Um, and I'm going to jump to exhibit A27. Um, at the time, it was known as Eagle, Eagle House. And so now it's known as Workman Hall. Um, and to this exhibit, which was dated 1996, uh, was when it was created, uh, was really for parking. Um, so Eastern had constructed parking. And on the left-hand side, you can see the proposed parking um, again, refer to Eagle House, which is Workman. And you see the grade lines uh, between the parking and Eagle House. So if I go back to that A22 picture, um, you can see the parking uh, in the image to the left, the parking is on the right-hand side. They really just flattened out that area. And as a result of flattening out the area for the parking and, and the walkway, there's a retaining wall. Um, and then if you look at the image on the right, uh, this is rotated about almost 180 degrees looking back up toward Workman. So you see Workman at the top of the photograph. The retaining wall is on the bottom right. And you can really see the slope where they just cut out um, in order to construct the, the parking area. What's the significance of them having done that? And is there a significance in that, that they already did the, um, the grade? Uh, creating man-made steep slope? Well, according to the ordinance, if it was constructed in conformance with, an ordin with the ordinance, um, it's exempt from any of the steep slope requirements. Uh, the township has interpreted that as needing a permit that was dated after 1979, uh, which this was. Um, the uh, kind of abundance of caution that we, since we're here anyway, to ask for this relief, um, was the actual final condition is slightly different than the plan that was from 1996. The 1996 plan didn't show the walkway, um, which created the more of a retaining wall, created a little bit more a different slope. It happens every day in a project where the proposed plan, they're you know as they're building a project like that, it gets it gets tweaked. The slope is a little bit different. Um, looking at A23, uh, this was moving. Uh, closer to Eagle Road, looking uh, down in the property, uh, in A22, you can see the telephone pole. So this is really just on the other side of that telephone pole. Again, really just showing where that slope is, um, was created as part of this permit. Then if I go to A24, so one thing I want to note before I close up A27, is if you see A27, the parking lot ends um, just past where Workman Hall is. Um, after, after this, so the, after 1996, they extended that parking area actually all the way back to their kind of main entrance driveway, and they built another dorm um, down uh, kind of on the lower right-hand side of A21. You can see that dark brown. Um, so that was another dorm, and when they built that dorm, they have a, a utility area there with a generator um, and some HVAC units. Um, we're looking to, they're going to be expanding that area to include some of the mechanicals for the workman hall. Um, so we'll be extending the retaining wall uh, there, which is slightly into that lower right-hand corner of A21 of steep slopes that's highlighted in red. Um, exhibit A24 um, shows those to air, you know, shows that area um, right off to the right uh, of the image. You can see it looks a little shinier. It's really that a retaining wall that exists. It's a boulder retaining wall there. Um, that will be really just shifted a little bit to the left. So again, you can see where when they cut in the existing mechanicals, they shaved down the hill there to have to reduce the height of the retaining wall closer to the building. Um, and again, we're, we're just simply proposing to extend that same utility corral.
Exhibit A25 is a closer up image. You can see where that uh, retaining wall is. You can see the green, uh, I guess it's a generator there. Um, and then again, that slopes off to the left. So as we enlarge that, we'll be encroaching a little bit into that slope. Can you, can you show me again where you're referring on A21, where are these photographs? Yeah, so A21, um, if you look at A21, I'm going to look at the proposed plan on the right-hand side. Uh, the, the slope is really highlighted in red. So if I extended the red out to where it says asphalt walkway and stood on the walkway and looked back toward the red, that's right where you're standing. And then I will go to the last area, um, which is A26, which is in the upper right-hand corner. Um, again, you can see some of these, a lot of these slopes were related to parking, right? Is, is if you have a, a sloping hill, um, it can be a gentle slope, but when you put in parking, you really have to flatten it out. Um, and I think this is the, the same result, uh, is that when they put in parking next to the adjacent building, um, there was an area of, of slope created uh, and we're simply looking to regrade a little portion of that slope um, in order to provide uh, a pedestrian access to that side of the building. Um, Rob, I'm going to show you the, the Brander Code uh, talks about slope controls and the purpose of having slope controls. Uh, within a reasonable degree of scientific certainty, in your opinion, is there any reason for the protection of the steep slopes listed in Section 280 112 of the ordinance, and I'll hand you the ordinance, and if you can look at that and see what the purposes of steep slope protection yeah, um, the, the, are, and, and is it related at all uh, to this project? Yeah, there, there, there is no purpose to maintain these slopes. These were simply created as part of um, previous projects. Uh, quite frankly, we're going to be creating very similar slopes um, in the same area. We're just regrading them, um, and so, it doesn't, you know, impacting these slopes is not going to change, you know, erosion and sedimentation, protecting watersheds, um, you know, increasing a, a potential of landslides. It's, it's, it doesn't do any of those things. Um, I'm going to show you just A10 through A12. And if you could just, because we haven't really shown the board yet what the addition is going to look like, if you can just walk them through that. Yes. So exhibit A10. Um, I'm going to use A21 as a reference. So if I went up to the top of the proposed plan, um, right where kind of the gray shading stops, and I look back to the front of the building, um, this is in, the, in that area. So this is the front courtyard of the existing building. Exhibit A11, um, this is looking at the uh, east side uh, of the building, so the right-hand side of the building. You can see uh, on A21, uh, the, the tan area with the, the double door uh, symbol shown, um, looking at that side of the building. Uh, exhibit A12, and I'll note one thing is, um, one thing you can note in the photographs is really a change in grade. So um, from the kind of top of this page um, of A21, uh, you can see the, the scale of the building and when you get to exhibit A, A12, you're really coming in at a lower level, right? And so the grades change in that area. Um, and again, this is uh, looking from, uh, let's say, the bottom of A21, looking back up to the building. Um, you can see what the, the rear of the building will look like. All right, let's jump to parking, if we can. Um, First, I'm going to show you what's been marked as A4, which is the campus plan. And can you just show the board um, where the parking, current parking areas are located um, on yes. campus? Yes. Um, so first, I'll orient. So uh, this is oriented with Eagle Road going left to right, King of Prussia, um, top to bottom on the right-hand side. Uh, we were just talking about Workman Hall, um, which is a little bit off-center, but um, close to the center of this exhibit. The main entrance to campus is off of Eagle Road, and you, and you come into the main entrance. Um, there's a parking, you know, two parking areas right adjacent to that uh, main entrance. Um, if you come in uh, to the campus off of Eagle Road and make an immediate right, um, there's parking, actually, that we saw on that permit plan that we just went over uh, that was installed around 1996. Um, coming around Workman, um, again, that 1996 plan stopped the parking there, and as you can see on this plan, that same pattern of parking 
now continues all the way back out to the loop road. And so you kind of have a double loaded parking there. Um, the main driveway then goes uh, over a bridge into the campus and you can see a large parking field uh, to the bottom of the page, uh, which then extends close. To, there's the library, um, which is right uh, in the bottom center of the plan. So there's parking there. Um, there is a small parking area to the western part of the campus, so the left side of this image, uh, adjacent to the gym. Um, there are, in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, a few buildings with kind of a minor amount of parking. Um, going back up to Eagle Road, uh, west of the main entrance, um, there's a secondary entrance around dorms, and again, there's uh, parking uh, located up in that area. Um, how many parking spaces are on campus? I believe it was 1,084. 1,084. I'm going to show you what's been marked as A17. Was a calculation done according to um, the way the township's interpreting the code as to the number of parking spaces required for the founder or for the workman hall addition? Yes, and I want to use this in conjunction with A18. Um, so A17 really shows the, the floor plans and how we went about uh, calculating the areas uh, with the zoning officer, um, looking at each individual area. So A17 has, has two pages, um, and how we identified the square footage of each of those areas, and then used the formulas from the township uh, code, as the township wanted us to look at, uh, to determine the number of parking spaces. Um, so looking at A18 is really a summary of that, right? So this gets into the, to the spreadsheet. Um, at the top of A18, so again, A18 is two pages long. Uh, the first page is, is what is currently required on campus. So we went through, um, to the best of our knowledge, every building on campus uh, and looked at every, every space and, and tabulated them. Um, as Nick pointed out earlier, the code doesn't contemplate that the same person using the dorm uses a classroom uses the dining hall, and uses the gym. Um, and so we're counting that, you know, the, the, the one person potentially four times when you're really looking at the way the township's interpreting the code. Um, so on the top of the second page, uh, it lists the total spaces required under the code was 1,537 uh, spaces where 1,084 uh, currently exist. The next section of uh, A18, Sheet 2, is the proposed workman addition, providing the same formulas. Um, we come up with an additional 64 parking spaces needed. Um, and really, the going back to A17, it may be difficult to see, it's really an enhancement of those spaces. Um, we're not looking to have more students. It's just really a, a better student experience. Um, there is a small performing arts area for uh, music. Right now, those events still happen on campus. It's just not really in a, in a correctly scaled venue, right? You might be in a much larger, larger auditorium where it was more meant to be a, a smaller, intimate setting. Thank you. That's all I have for Rob this time. Any questions from the board? No? Thank, Thank you. you. Frank? We'll get him. We lost Frank. Uh, no, you probably just have the one with Rob. I gave her the link. She doesn't have the link. Right. They were part of the application. Yeah, I didn't get that. I can I can scan it for you. Let me try to see if I can get it. I just wondered if you had an extra copy of it. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Commissioner Lansing. I do. Frank Tovani. Frank, are you a registered uh, professional engineer in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? Indeed I am. And you're also actually a registered professional traffic operations engineer. Is that accurate? It is. Um, I've marked as A20 your curriculum vitae. And is that accurate and true and correct? Yes. And you've appeared before these boards many, many times and been qualified as an expert witness? I have. Um, 
can we uh, qualify Frank as an expert witness in traffic yeah, objection. operations? Objection. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, did you first, did you perform a, for the land development application, did you perform a traffic engineering investigation of the traffic impact of the uh, Workman Hall addition? Yes, the trip generation investigations uh, were performed in mid-September. And what was your conclusion, basically, without going through the whole... Certainly. Um, without going through the whole report, um, what was basically <clears throat> your conclusions of that report, which has been marked as A15? Essentially, the traffic impacts are minimal, perhaps imperceptible. As uh, we heard from council at the beginning, this is really uh, an application that's about modernizing and improving the existing experience for existing students. Um, no anticipated increase in students or staff. Um, now, as a result of this zoning hearing, did you also perform a parking-related investigation on the parking demand for the Workman Hall renovations for the campus as a whole? Yes. And uh, we have marked that as A16. Correct. And I'll hand it to you. Thank you. Um, and did you perform a count or your people perform a count of campus-wide parking demand? Yes. And what dates did you perform that? Uh, those are shown on page two of A16. It was on Monday, October 9th, and Wednesday, October 11th of this year. And why did you pick those dates? Well, in, in any parking study, it's always instructive to check with the applicant for uh, his or her opinion about when parking tends to peak at a particular existing land use. And I was informed that Mondays and Wednesdays, late morning, uh, typically are the peak times for uh, this particular university. As it turns out, the Institute of Transportation Engineers, or ITE, makes available a publication entitled Parking Generation Manual. And if you look, I believe it's page four of A16, uh, ITE provides a handy table that shows how peak parking varies with time and it is reassuring to see that, uh, in, in, according to this independent third-party source, it is indeed late mornings on weekdays that universities tend to have their peak parking demand. So the applicant did not see that prior to giving me the answer to my question, and uh, it was reassuring to see some consistency there. Um, describe uh, what the study revealed, the parking study. So as we heard uh, from the last witness, there are 1,084 existing parking spaces. They're broken down into multiple zones. And the last page of A16, sorry. I might use that for notes. Uh, page 7 of A16 is a uh, existing campus parking breakdown by different areas with the, showing the existing parking supply amounting to 1,084 spaces. I personally visited the campus on the days I previously mentioned starting shortly after 10 a.m. took a little while to go through the whole campus but it was done before 12 noon on each of those days um, and observed empty parking spaces by zone as shown in the last page of A16. Um, as you can see in this marked up version of A16, uh, zone D is closest to Workman Hall. Uh, it has five or nine empty parking spaces presently during the busiest time of the day uh, during my visits. It's uh, interesting to note that some other zones that are nearby, namely E, H, and J, have many uh, dozens of empty parking spaces. And again, this is during the busiest time of day for classes. What this application is really about is essentially performance oriented and will uh, tend to have peak parking demands probably more in the evenings when there'll be even more parking available than what I observed uh, during these late morning weekdays. And how many available unused spaces did you find in your study? So as you can see near the bottom <clears throat> of this table from page two of A16, on the busier of the two days, there were still 250 empty parking spaces in total on campus, which I believe you noted is about a 23% vacancy campus-wide. Um, within a reasonable degree of scientific certainty, 
you have an opinion on the anticipated parking demand from Workman Hall and the campus as a whole uh, uh, on campus? Yes. And what is that opinion? Uh, my opinion is the proposed expansion will result in a de minimis additional parking demand, if, if any, and the existing parking demands are well met by the existing school's parking supply. And under the same standard, uh, do you see, in your opinion, any adverse parking impacts uh, from the construction of uh, Workman or the addition to Workman's Hall? No. Thank you. That's all I have. Any questions from the board? Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, that's all we have, just with request the exhibits to be made part of the record, please. Okay, uh, without objection, any uh, public comment? Seeing none, uh, take a motion. John, you wanna go uh, four for four? Three for three, where are we? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would move that the applicant be, <coughs> excuse me, granted the relief requested in the application uh, from Section 280-103B with respect to uh, the uh, parking space issue and the steep slope requirements of Section 280-112D of the code all in accordance with the plans and testimony that has been offered this evening. Is there a second? Second. Any board discussion? No? Okay, we'll take a vote. Bud? Uh, yes. John? Aye. John? Aye. I'm also in favor. Good luck with the project, thank you. Good luck. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll take a minute. Yeah, thank you. Yes.
is she your granddaughter goes to the middle school? No, no, she goes right now. She's at Pius. Oh, oh her okay. Father's in Orlando. Orlando. And where's Pius? Oh, oh, on Ravens Road. Road. Okay. Lawrence Park is below. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, yeah, yeah. And um, both go on. Yes, I know. Next year she goes to a high school. Radnor or no. She didn't want to go to Radnor. She wanted to go to Catholic school. Well, that and the girls. Huh? The girls. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, you know. Is that your only grandchild? No, I have two other kids. She has a brother who's two years younger. Oh, and he? And he's he's in sixth grade. He's at Pius also. Oh, okay. And then he really, his father had gone to St. George Prep. Mm. So he's pretty. popular school. Oh, it is, and I have several cousins that went there. It's very popular. I mean, boy, the people that go there kind of retain their loyalty to the, to the school forever. So, I mean, there's lots of, you said Florida course is in North Philly, so. He's, uh, does he do sports? Is it the youth sports? It was sports. Okay, because it's a huge... Uh, <laughs> That's interesting. Uh-huh. their attorney. Oh, oh, okay. The, uh, we're the tail draggers tonight, huh? Yeah. We're back on the record? <laughs> back on the record? Yes, okay. Uh, appeal number 3170, the applicant John and Karen Newton, property located at 946 Mill Road and zoned R1-DM, residential density modification. Applicants seek a variance from the provisions of code section 280-97B4 in order to construct an exterior freestanding elevator within the front yard setback 
at the rear edge of their front parking area. In the R1 district, a 60-foot front yard is required. The proposed elevator shaft structure will be located approximately 50 feet from the right-of-way. Council? Good evening, members of the board. Jim Greenfield on behalf of the applicants. Um, the uh, quoted language from the code is in the density modification uh, part of the code. And what it essentially says is you can't have any accessory structures in the front yard. The township has deemed this uh, proposed elevator to be an accessory structure. And um, we, uh, uh, by necessity, as we'll show you, we, uh, we want to build it 10 feet into that front yard. Uh, so that's what we're, why we're here for the variance. It's, uh, I suppose someone could make the argument that it's de minimis. It's uh, 10 feet into a 60, so that's 16 or 17 percent, fairly close to being de minimis, but uh, you know, right in that, right in that neighborhood anyway. Uh, for our first witness, I'm going to call John Newton. John, J-O-N, Newton, N-E-W-T-O. Let me take that, John. Uh, good evening. Is that what I want? Yeah. Oh, yep. good evening. Uh, I've lived in uh, the I'll, town. I'll, 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 we'll do it by question and answer. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was very just. Mr. Newton, um, how long have you lived at 946 Mill Road? Uh, over 40 years. And um, over 40 years. And, and you're here this evening asking for a variance so that you can construct an elevator uh, leading from your parking area in front of the house uh, to down to the level of where your house is located. Why is it that you want to put in an elevator? Well, it's the, the house is below grade and uh, it's 14 or so steps down there. Uh, but now it feels like about 140, and I'm sure it's going to feel like 1,400 before too much longer. Uh, I would like to die in that house. Everything in the house comes in and out that those steps below grade. So every grocery, every bag of mulch, every case of wine, uh, everything comes in and out that way, and it's taking its toll, and I'd like some relief to, uh, to be able to keep functioning and uh, especially those cases of wine, so. Uh. So there's no way to get a driveway down from the front of the property down to your house, correct? There is none, no, it's a very unique property. Um, ha ha has that configuration been essentially the same since you bought the property? Yes, yeah, slightly changed when we put an addition on in the back, but essentially it's the same, yes. Um, Have you uh, encountered difficulties moving groceries and other things up and down those steps? Yeah, uh, indeed. I am uh, not getting any younger, and uh, it's, it's getting more and more difficult. I'm 85, and it's keeping me young, but it's also killing me. <laughs> so. Have you uh, looked at other solutions to move things from the parking area down to the area of the house? Uh, there really aren't any. Uh, there's that one narrow entrance point there that, uh, that's to the property. There's no other way to get into the property. I'm locked on both sides by neighbors, in the back by a creek in the open space from uh, Foxfields. So there's no other way to get in. Okay. Uh, that's all the questions I have for Mr. Newton. Does the board have any questions for him? Uh, you said you were 85. What, maybe afterwards you can tell me the type of wine you drink. <laughs> Red or white? Uh, yeah, we could talk. We could talk. Yeah, you, <laughs> we could certainly talk about that. <laughs> okay. For our uh, for our second witness, we'll call Jeff Spelker, who's the architect. Mr. Spelker, are you uh, an architect? I am, yes. Are you uh, registered in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? Yes, I am. How long have you been in that profession? Uh, I've been in the profession for 26 years and registered.
district architect, licensed architect for almost 20. Have you uh, previously been qualified as an expert witness in proceedings before municipal boards? I have, yes. On how many occasions? A handful, let's say eight or nine. Uh, we would move that Mr. Spelker be qualified as an expert architect. Without objection. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Spelker, uh, were you retained by the Newtons to uh, look into possibly building an elevator uh, to move items from their parking area down to the level of their dwelling? Yes, I was. Uh, and you examined the property when you were retained? Yes, correct. Uh, could you please describe how the property is configured currently in terms of elevation changes and obstacles? Well, as you can see from the site plan, this is a very unique uh, uh, circumstance, very unique property uh, in that the driveway coming off of Mill Road um, is separated by the lower elevation where the house is set by 10 to 14 feet, depending on where you are on the property. But it's about a 10 foot drop from the parking lot or the parking, the driving area to the lower level where the, at the bottom of the stairs you can see here at the bottom of the steps from, from this location to this location. That's, that's currently existing. There's a break in the wall um, where the stairs drop, the stairs take them down to the lower level, the 1,400 steps that uh, Mr. Newton was referring to. Uh, between the area uh, where you propose to place the elevator and the street, what's there? Between the elevator and the, and with the street, there's currently a, um, I mean, the, no, no road is at no road is at the to the right of this plan, correct? Correct. Yes. Right. Mill, there's Mill Road, and then there's a driveway. Right. And then you're talking about the access. Right. Right. The, currently, right now, there is a there's a break. Like I said, there's a there's a break in the wall, um, that's about three feet above the driving area, and that gets you to a platform, the top landing, and then you can take a left basically and go down the the uh, the L-shaped stairs that take you down to the bottom. At the top, there's also a small I guess I'll call it a shelter. There's just two columns with a small little roof that has um, asphalt shingles on it um, that the two columns sit on top of, sit on top of this wall. Jim, and do you, you want to identify the plan? Yes, all, all the exhibits that we are gonna show the board are actually part of the, uh, of the application package that we submitted. So we're not gonna mark anything new. And I guess uh, the plan we could call, I, I mean, I assume the entire application package is board exhibit one, is that fair? So we'll call it, can we call the plan 1A? Why don't we make the application A1, we'll make the plan A2. Great. And then if you would, okay. you probably should introduce, at some point introduce the- we, And we will, we'll put the pictures in in a moment. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. We'll do the deed is A3. Do you want to mark the photograph separately or just in total? Um, we can do them separately if you want. Okay. You want to do that now or you want to wait until we finish talking about the plan? As, All right. As, as it comes. All right, we'll keep going for a little bit. Um, Mr. Spelker, what's the, uh, the uh, elevation change from the parking area down to the uh, grade level of the dwelling? Uh, it's about it's about 10 feet, nine and a half feet from the top of the wall, excuse me, from the parking area down to the bottom of the steps. Uh, is there any way to take a driveway or some other form of access from Mill Road down to the level of the house? Not within, not within the property bounds, no. Um, the uh, location that you've selected for the elevator, how did you, uh, uh, come upon that location? Well, in, in reviewing the location uh, for the elevator, it seemed um, pretty apparent that this was the, I'll say the correct location. Um, there is, as I mentioned, there's, a, there's currently a break in the wall that gets you to the top of the stairs. Um, so that entrance is already there, so there would not be any additional work that would be done at the top of the stairs to get through the wall. Um, and when you get to the bottom of the stairs, there is a pad, there's basically a concrete pad that gets you kind of underneath where that pavilion or that little shelter is at the top of the steps. So where that is, where we're trying to locate, suggesting to locate the elevator 
it's on existing impervious coverage, so we're not, we're not asking for any, uh, any change in impervious. Um, so we're trying to keep it within, within the, the existing impervious coverage. Um, there's already a structure there, as I mentioned, on top of the wall. It's kind of an entry, uh, I'll call it an entry pavilion or entry shelter, um, so that, that the elevator would, although a little bit larger roof, it's only gonna be maybe a foot or two higher than the existing roof. So you know, from the mill road, from the parking area, there would be very, very minimal amount of visibility. Um, most of it would obviously be on the Newton side of the, of the, uh, <laughs> of the, of the wall. Um, and then it's, it's pretty clear also that there's a reason why those stairs are over there. It's because that's actually the farthest from the road, farthest from, you know, farthest away from this, you know, or the closest to the front yard setback, I should say. Um, so the idea of keeping it over there, it's actually as minimal, as invasive as possible um, from tra foot traffic, vehicular traffic, visibility, even from the neighbors. Is there any place <clears throat> else along that area of the wall where the elevator could be located? Theoretically, yes, but it would, as I mentioned, it would be closer to the road. It'd be more, it'd be more difficult to, to put it. There'd be more work that would need to be done to the wall if it was in any, any other location. This wall has already been reinforced in this area because of the stair. So there would not be any interruption or any changes to the existing wall itself. Everything that we're, we're proposing is going to be as separate from, but connected to the, to the wall and the driveway. Is the location of the uh, proposed elevator shaft as far from Mill Road as you could place it? Yes. Let me show you a couple of pictures. Is the, is the proposed elevator shown on the, the plan that you have in front of us? Yeah, it's in this. That's what I it's this, it's this kind of uh, hatched area. I think, we, I think, I don't know what exhibit it might be. There's, there's a closer up plan, I believe, as part yeah. of the, um, what are the, part of the submission. What are the dimensions of the proposed elevator shaft? It's, it's, six, feet, it's six feet, I'll say, north to south. Um, and the full structure is about eight feet long. So it's only six by about eight feet. And this, the elevator itself would be about six okay. by six. And where's the entrance to the house? The, there's multiple entrances to the house, but the primary entrance is here, and then there's also a secondary entrance in the back here. So you would take a walkway from the elevator to bring the correct, which, into the house? And correct, and it, and it does, as, as, as you pointed out, it's, it does already exist. There already is a walkway from the bottom of the stairs on this pad, which is, this is all pad, and then there is a current walkway that takes you to both of these entrances. And where's the current Parking, where would the parking be for it? Right now, you can see this is the edge, this is the edge of paving. Uh -huh. So right now, there's a little bit of a loop here. It's pulling off, pulling off of mill okay. towards this area, towards the, the entrance. So much of the time, you would stop there, drop off whatever it is you're bringing into the house, and then go park? Is that yeah, I mean, I think I, Mr. Newton could speak to this better than I could, but I believe they, they basically park right they, they park right near there. Oh, they park there. This is all, this is all paved in front, of, in front of that entrance. Okay. Pictures will show it a little better. Let's um, call that one at A2. Is that how we're doing it? Uh, we're going to be A4. A4. Okay. Um, Mr. Spelker, would you please uh, tell us what A4 is and from what perspective it's taken? This is a photograph taken uh, basically from just as you pulled off of mill um, directly, looking directly at that, that entrance, that break in the wall. Um, and you can see the parking that's all around it. So I believe that's kind of, the, as Mr. Newton said, um, they basically park there and that's, that is their one and only access to their, to their house. And um, the elevator shift would be placed where uh, in this picture? The, the, the intent is that we would walk straight through, but instead of taking a left to go down the stairs, you'd walk straight into the elevator shaft, so right where that, right where that planter is with the flags, and it would, and like I said, the, the roof would be minimal amount of, of visibility above, above the existing. So you're basically looking straight through it. That shelter would be in front of the elevator. And as you uh, look at this picture, uh, as you go through that opening, the stairs are to the left and go down, right? Correct. And the stairs would remain, correct? Absolutely, yeah. yes. All right. We'll call that one, is that A5? OK, 
Okay. Um, Mr. Spelker, what's uh, A5 and from where is, where is it taken? This is taken from the, what I'll call the front yard of the house at the bottom of the hill. You can see the uh, pavilion, sorry, didn't mean to move that. You can see the, the, the kind of underside of the roof of the pavilion. That planter right there is the same one that I was pointing out on the other side when you're looking from the top side. And you can see when you go down the steps, this is, this is the bottom of the stairs, and then you can see the path that leads them to the, to the house. And I, well, I, that may be the next question. I'm gonna <laughs> well, no, go ahead. The, the intent is that in, right behind this bush, which likely will not be there um, when this is done from an access standpoint, that's where the shaft would be. That's where the elevator would be located. Right. And then right on the back side. And, and under that brick, uh, uh, well, forget. No, go, no, go ahead. No, no, the next picture yep. next does it better. Picture. Thank you. We get uh, A6. All right. Uh, exhibit A6 is another picture looking at that area. Please tell us what that shows. This is a little bit closer to what I was just uh, from the, the previous photograph on the other side of that bush that shows, again, I guess it's a good reference point. It's this planter. It seems to be showing up in all the photographs that gives you a good reference point. Um, this is the top of the stairs as you're going down over to the right. This is a kind of a storage area that's underneath that landing. The intent is that that would be a, I'll call it a bridge, but it's more of a link. that would be about three feet of a link from this point over to the shaft so that this is still an accessible space, not, a, not, not accessible enough to be able to have the doors go out that way and go in and around, the doors are going to be exiting towards the house. This will be a seven. Uh, tell us, please, what that shows. Oh, there we go. Sorry. This is the, um, where is this? What is this? This is, this is the bottom. Sorry, it took me a second to disorient myself. Um, this is the bottom of that. Actually, I could, can I show the two photographs at the same time? Yeah. Because this is, this is basically this wall, this here is this the same stone. This is just looking at the same, there's a kind of, basically just a small little stucco wall that's, that's kind of protecting this, this uh, storage area. And again, the so dimensions of the elevator shaft are what? The elevator shaft itself is likely going to be about six by six, but then there's going to be that two to three foot kind of connection that, that bridges basically over the top of this area that I was, that I was referencing before. So the, again, it's almost freestanding with just a, just a kind of platform link so that the goal is to not mess with any, really any of this, aside from basic construction debris and you know, just, just cleaning things up and making that connection. But the, but the elevator will be, <laughs> the elevator is double doors then? I'll the like idea is that, yeah, so it'd be double-sided. You go in one side, we're going to drop down the, the 10 feet, and then you're going to exit the other <laughs> side. Because otherwise, in order to, in order to, um, in order to make it so you go in, go down, and come right. out of the same location, we would have to pull it further away from the wall. So then you would actually be exiting the elevator and facing this door. And with those buttresses there, it was really going to, I mean, to be honest with you, it was going to push it out another three, four, five feet. And we were trying to stay within the existing impervious. We were trying to get it so it was, it was a little tighter to the stairs. So we felt like the idea of trying to have the double doors made sense. I, I don't know if I understand the variance then. Where, where is the 60 foot setback? Oops, sorry. The, right, the, the plan yep, sorry. shows the. Um, the this, edge of the right of way. This, this line right here is actually the 60-foot front yard setback. Right. And this is the, the this right here is the edge of the right of way. And that's, that would be 60 feet in. As you'll see, it's about roughly 10 feet inside of that front I, part of it. I understand. Okay. okay, thank you. Make this uh, A8. Um, could, you, <coughs> could you tell us, please, what that drawing shows? This is, what this is showing is um, basically a side elevation. This is the existing, uh, we can call it the entry pavilion. This is the driveway area. And when you come through that pavilion, you're going to walk straight into the elevator shaft, the elevator pavilion. And you can come down the steps, kind of this, this drawing serves the steps kind of coming towards you and then down. And then this is the photograph, basically looking back up, the one that had the bush in front of it. 
um, looking back up towards the, uh, to the stairs that are on the right. They go up behind the pavilion. Um, that's in, in your opinion, uh, as an architect, is, is this proposal uh, consistent with the uh, residential use of this property? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's consistent with its, uh, with in material. It's consistent in uh, the, the kind of the, the residential need to, to be able to access a, you know, a 10 foot vertical separation. Will the implementation of this plan have any adverse effect on neighboring properties? No, not that I'm aware of. Uh, will it make any alterations to traffic patterns or access to this property? No. Uh, will, it affect in, uh, will, it, will it affect the provision of public services in any way? No. Uh, will it have any adverse impact upon uh, township health, safety, and welfare? Not that I'm aware of, no. And I think you've already indicated that it will not much affect the appearance of the property from the street, correct? Correct. The, the, the roof of this is, as you can see from this drawing, the roof of this is maybe two and a half, maybe two and a half feet above that, that kind of low, that low profile shelter that's, that's right at the entrance. And which is, it's also behind it, by the way, too. There's a little bit of a depth perception too. The board have any questions for Mr. Spelker? I have one other question. This is on A2. Uh, the exit doors from the elevator mm -hmm. is the landing uh, on t onto which the uh, folks would step out of the elevator or is that existing impervious there or is that new impervious we're we're trying we're trying to keep it within within the existing impervious i guess there is a chance that there may be a, 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 a one kind of a landing stone that might be right there at the exit of the at the lower level of the uh at the lower level of the uh the, the elevator itself okay because I, I asked that question because as i read the plan the property is currently non-conforming as to impervious I believe that is correct, yes. So to the extent that yeah, in the right. course of doing the construction, the decision is made to add a landing area there, which, which makes sense. I mean, um, particularly if one of the uses is to be carrying things of, you mm -hmm. know, that are bulky or heavy or whatever, you know, you, you would expect that to be a, a solid landing area. Uh, so, the, the plans are a bit imprecise as it relates to just what that is going to look like. Uh, and given the, given the non-conforming status of the property currently, that would presumably require relief? If, if we go in for a uh, permit and, and it appears that we're gonna have to add any, any impervious, I assume that we might have to come back for relief unless the township deems it to be so de minimis as to not require that. But I think if, if you look at the picture that's up there now, it does show where the landing area is gonna be, isn't that right? No, this is actually- well, That's, oh, that's on, the storage the area and the buttress. I, the, the elevator is closer to us Correct. Some feet away from that area. Yeah, yeah. it's actually kind of behind, behind this, behind yeah. basically behind this, yeah. this bush. I, I can, I can. What I, what I can tell you is it's exactly what Mr. Greenfield was saying, that um, if, if in the course of construct or not construction, in the course of developing the permit drawings for this and the submission for permit, it looks as though we're going to need a landing of let's say, I'm going to say it's a three foot by four foot landing, just making up a making up a number, that. If you look at this, as you can see, this walkway is not really conducive to what potentially that may need to be in terms of that, that walk, but it is also impervious. And it also isn't necessarily the most efficient way of getting from, one, from point A to point B that I'm, I will venture, I guess, that we could, we'll find that, that three foot by four foot square footage to make it so that it is a, a net zero, that there will not be any, there will not be any uh, petition for coming before you again for, for an additional ground coverage. 
So, so no plans have been filed with the township for this project, is it? We right have now? not. No, we we, we needed this, relief from you for this variance well, before we could ask for a building permit. Yeah. Well, I, usually there's a filing, then there's a finding that you need a variance, then you come to us. We're a little backwards here, and this smacks of an advisory opinion, as opposed to a determination off of the basis of a decision of a zoning officer, doesn't it? Well, I, I, th I think w we did. We actually, we, yeah. actually, we actually did meet. I met, I met informally with the, with the zoning officer um, some months ago, um, walked through basically this entire project with him, and he suggested to us that, that a variance would need to be um, uh, submitted for, um, petitioned, and granted. Um, and there was no reference to let's let's get a let's get a building permit submission first, and then we'll make that determination. I, I, we were just going off of what what uh, Kevin was telling us. I, I mean, certainly uh, when we yeah, get, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not saying that 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 didn't happen. You know, typically we need some action of the zoning officer to then uh, consider that determination whether there should be, uh, you know, whether that should be upheld, whether there should be a variance, whatever, whatever the, uh, the relief is that's sought. That's why I'm asking the question. Because we, jurisdictionally, we don't have the ability to grant advisory opinions under the MPC. Well, again, this was based on the zoning officer's, you know, interpretation that we were gonna need the front yard variance. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, as Mr. Spelker indicated, when we, when we uh, bring in an application for a building permit, and if it appears that we are adding some impervious in the area where that shaft is going to be, we'll be in a position to remove some impervious as, as uh, compensation for that so that there's no net addition. And, you know, certainly... Um, you could indicate as a condition of approval on this application that uh, that the uh, that once implemented, this project will result in no net increase in impervious. We'd be fine with that. And Mr. Greenfield, just so the board knows, so there's nothing in writing from the zoning officer. The determination was made during an in-person meeting. It sounds like with the parties. Um, we had no formal determination from the zoning officer in writing. Um, but, you know, our, my understanding is based on the meetings, he indicated that that was, that, that the requirement was to get the variance for the front yard setback and that he didn't see any other problems that implicated the need for board relief on, on this project. Understood. Good. Thank you. Any other questions? That's all we have. We, uh, we uh, appreciate your consideration of it. I'm just curious what the view will be from the mansion side, because you don't have a picture that really shows that. Is that totally blocked by the wall and the foliage? Do you mean a, pic a photograph of the house from? Of this proposed site from the building that's to the left. You can't see it. Oh, you mean that you, you're talking about the neighbor? Yeah. The that's, yeah, yeah, Mr. Newton could speak to that better than I could, but it's, it's well. There's a, there's a very high brick wall uh, and then a very large, <coughs> a very large holly tree. You cannot see it from the mansion side. You cannot see it from the other side. As you, the only place you can see it from is if you're standing in my yard. Really. And for, uh, for what it's worth, I've, I've checked with all the, there's only four of us on Mill Road at that yeah. portion, as you know, John. And uh, I've shared the drawings, the concept drawings, with all of those folks, and everybody's thumbs up. Uh, they they want to get in on my wine, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Doesn't look like it. No. Thank you. Uh, just your exhibits. To yes, we moved the admission of all the exhibits. Without objection. Uh, any public comment? Nope. Seeing none, uh, is there a motion? 
You may as well take the honors. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, move that the applicant be in appeal 3170 be granted the requested relief from the requirements of section 280-97B4 in order to construct an exterior freestanding elevator in accordance with the plans and the testimony presented this evening provided that any construction of such elevator when implementing a plan filed with the township for building permits results in no addition to the impervious uh, coverage ratio currently uh, at the site. Is there a second? Second. Any board discussion? It'll make my visits a lot easier. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I want to visit too. Uh, we'll take a vote then. Uh, aye. Jen? Aye. I'm also in favor. Thank you. Good luck with the Good project. Luck. Thank you. Uh, we stand in adjournment until the December. Thank you. It's interesting how this application kind of veered into a discussion about wine. <laughs> it's as much wine as it was zoning. <laughs>